Hi, I'm Ian from Kids and Glass Houses, and you're watching LiveTheScene.com. I'd just like to firstly say, Happy Star Wars Day. Are you a, are you a fan of Star Wars? I am a big fan, yeah. big fan. So, yeah. happy. may the fourth be with you. Yeah. Have you been celebrating at all or have you just been... We, uh, we haven't. Me and Alid had planned to, you know, pick up some lightsabers and maybe battle down the main high street of Manchester, but we haven't been celebrating. I'm hoping someone brings me a Chewy mask, if I'm honest. That's what I'm hoping for. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, so, welcome back to Manchester as well. Is it good to be back? It is. Manchester um, is awesome. We love playing here. Um, we're not just saying it because obviously you're from Manchester. I'm not just saying that. Like we do actually love coming here. It's always been good to us since like the first time we came when we were playing like Roadhouse down the road or like Manchester Academy Three upstairs. Like so, yeah, good times. And recently you've been described as everyone's favourite support act. Um, is it nice to be playing your own headline shows again? Yeah, it's always, it's always nice to play some headline shows. I mean, we've been away for a while, so we're so hungry for it now. Like It's sort of like a rebirth and, you know, it's, it feels like we're a new band again, especially with the change of sound of like, the second record. And, yeah, we're just confident and hungry. And how's the tour been going so far for you? It's been awesome, man. Like, Newcastle and Leeds... Um, both shows have been two of the best shows we've ever played in our career, so hopefully the, the trend will keep and Manchester will be off the chain tonight. And have you had any problems so far on the tour? Uh, problems? No, none whatsoever. So don't, don't jinx it, don't jinx it. <laughs> I do apologise <laughs> if anything goes wrong. I want some positive vibes, yeah, if it goes wrong I'm looking for you, son. <laughs> and so what can people expect when they come and see you guys live? Um, well, with the dirt tour that we're doing now, it's definitely a step up. I mean, we've always loved bands that put on a show as opposed to, oh, this is our song, this is our song, this is our song. Like, we've worked out, uh, like, the set so that it's a show rather than just us playing our songs one after the other. Um, it's a lot more intense because Obviously, the second record has a lot of like fresh meaning to us, as opposed to like the tail end of Smart Casual Tour. Maybe like the songs didn't have as weren't as relevant to us personally as these songs are now. And obviously, we're a lot more a lot hungry for it again. Like I said, and yeah, just intent but fun. So, for the people that haven't managed to catch you this time round on tour, when when will you be back um, touring the UK? Or we'll be touring at the end of the year. I'm putting that out there. That's all I'm putting out there. <laughs> and obviously you've been announced for uh, Tea in the Park and you've been announced for uh, Radio One's Big Weekend. Um, is it always a good feeling because like, these are all Radio One endorsed you know, festivals and when you've reached Radio One it's kind of like a, that's like a peak for when you've kind of made it. Is that a good feeling for you? Yeah, I mean, like, I wouldn't necessarily say that we've made it. I mean, we still see ourselves as just starting and there's a long way to go. But obviously having things like Radio One on board and like television is just like, it's pretty mind blowing because it's something that you obviously aim for. Yeah. When you first started out as a band, and we never expected it to come, so yeah. we're just kind of enjoying it while it's, while it's lasting. And will you guys be gracing any of the other festival stages over the summer? Yeah. Can you give us any hints on that? No. <laughs> Buy tickets for all of them. We'll be at them. <laughs> And so let, let's talk a little bit about Dirt. Um, it's quite different to Smart Casual. Did you have any like initial intention with when you were going in recording the album? Um, I think one of the main things was um, we like a lot of sort of old music. We're not really too fussed on like a lot of bands that are coming out now and just sounding the same. That whole Pro Tools, oversaturated, overcompressed, like just well, yeah. I don't know, drivel. I guess I just uh, there's no heart to music. There's not much heart in new bands I, I guess and we wanted to get across that we're actually a real band and we give a fuck about what we do we don't just want to write a song because we think it'll sell records yeah. or that it sounds pretty or whatever and we wanted to show people that you can still write pop tunes and have that edge and sound like a real band yeah. with real drums and real guitars so I think that was one of the main intents and obviously we wanted to 
kind of write bigger songs because we've always been like I think like the first record we were sort of wearing our influences like mainly on a sleeve like more of the quirkier side like more like the Cure and the like Patti LaBelle and like the police when we wanted to like get the other side to like those artists through like the bigger sort of stadium sounds as well so yeah I guess like Dirt's kind of the record that we always wanted kids in glass houses to sound like. Would you say that Dirt was like a, a way of you moving away from like the genre that you were possibly lumped into during Smart Casual? Yeah because we never thought that we were part of that we know we got pigeonholed in a genre we always thought we stood out from but evidently people didn't see it the same way we did and I think this is yeah dirt a statement that we're not part of that it's not that we don't like any of that it's just that's not what we want kids in glass houses to be about or sound like I guess and did that kind of give you the confidence to go out and change your sound and, and stuff like that did you did, yeah. did you have any like qualms with changing while you were recording no no, no. I mean like Bands like um, sort of Stereophonics and Oasis have been, well, they were sort of the first influences on like myself and Alid and Shay and Phil and like that didn't come through at all. And we love the way records like that sound and the way those like guitars are just like big and like simple. And yeah, so there was no fear whatsoever in going into it and yeah, just being like, yeah, let's write some big tunes, like no fear whatsoever. Yeah. And what can we expect next from Kids in Glass Houses? Uh, bigger songs. You're going to need like a CD about this big <laughs> to fit on them. Yeah. And will you be trying to take your sound to maybe new places that you haven't been before? Yeah, um, yeah always, man. Like we're we're a very open-minded band when it comes to music. We're always keen on listening to sort of new genres and new styles. I mean, as long as music's good yeah. and it means something, then it's worth giving a listen, you know. And um, yeah, we're always going to take influence from new things and. Especially life experiences, yeah. all, they'll always come through in our songs. And it's got to be said that all the Welsh bands do tend to have like a certain amount of loyalty to each other. You always tour with like the Blackout or Lost Profits and so on. Uh, who are the be best and worst people to tour with? And if, if they are bad, why, why do you keep touring with them? Um, I enjoy touring with every Welsh band we've played with. Uh, no sitting on the fence now. I'm not sitting on the <laughs> fence, it's, it's the honest truth. Mm. Like we were lucky enough, like we've only ever played a show, a few shows with Profits and we were lucky enough that they took us out in February and they were awesome to us, they've always been wicked to us, always given us advice and helped us out where they can. The Blackout, I can't even tell you how many shows I've played with our band, like it's a few. Yeah. <laughs> it's been at least four years we've been playing together, yeah. so that's always awesome. I used to be in a band with Neil from Attack Attack, so I've known him for years and we used to play with like Ryan and Mike's old band and Will's old band as well so there's a proper like family tree in yeah. South Wales so everyone does just get on and the Funeral Boys obviously we talked to them a few years ago and that was wicked fun and like yeah and like Chris comes over the house and plays FIFA with me and yeah. stuff and it's just like it's a proper family community yeah. and yeah so I got not a bad word to say about yeah. any band from Wales. Fun stuff and if you could be in any other band any other band like apart from Kids in Glass Houses, for one day, who, who would you choose? I'd love... I'd love to... I'd love the revolution to get back with Prince and just join the revolution for a day. I know I'd be, like, just overawed by everything, but that'd be sick. Yeah, just to jam talk, with Prince. With Prince yeah, be, that'd, be awesome. that'd be jokes, like. Yeah. And finally, have you got any um, like messages for your fans or perhaps anyone that's perhaps overlooked Kids in Glass Houses in the past? Um, to the people that have come out on this show, uh, on this tour, thank you very much. Like this, this tour has been mental so far, and we're only three dates in. It's been quite humbling, in fact. And if you haven't come to check us out, talk to someone that has, and you'll know what you're missing. Like